Dear students, now we are uh, moving to our final uh, topic, which is uh, budgeting or how to prepare a budget. Of course, when we speak about uh, budgets, we mean to provide the main important part, which is about the standard or the criteria that we are going to use at the end of the year, the fiscal year. Uh, to prepare our attention directing reporting level uh, which we did illustrate in chapter one as of a performance report when we uh, made the comparison between the actual and the budgeted information and uh, a budget is a quantitative expression which means we are going to reflect our own plan into numbers and these numbers will be in a matter of a currency level and uh, budgeting uh, from that perspective will be a cost management tool which means uh, helping management to um, uh, as we can say manage costs uh, then uh, the budget will facilitate planning and coordination because when we know our own limitations our own uh, criteria, our own uh, plans, our own standards, we will uh, plan and coordinate in between us to achieve uh, our own target within these uh, uh, levels or within the, these um, uh, standards. Uh, of course, uh, when we are speak about the benefits of budgeting, uh, it means the first part, it's about thinking ahead, which is very important into the competitive environment that we are living in. And uh, it means that we have to uh, always re-evaluate the existing activities. And then uh, it will help us into communicating and coordinating our own actions. And at the end, uh, it will be used as a benchmark to evaluate our own uh, performance at the end. Of course, uh, one main important item is called zero base budget a zero base budget means when we are to prepare the budget we will uh, begin with a zero given numbers which means we only given items without any numbers available into our budget we are not to increase or decrease any amount but we are going to calculate whatever we need uh, from the scratch and this is very important and this means that we are going to justify our own expenditure according to the activity and the capacity utilization. Um, according to this, we must understand one main important item, which is slack. What is a slack? A budgetary slack means someone will try to uh, prepare the budget to achieve his own goals uh, and not to uh, go with uh, the business needs mainly. So it's an overstatement or understatement of budgeted revenue to create an easier goal to achieve. This is the most important part. This means this is the meaning of the words. And then um, to prepare our own budget, we must go through forecasting because it's about the future mainly. It's about problem solving situation mainly as we did discuss in chapter one. So sales for Scott is a prediction of sales under a given set of conditions. And according to this, we must understand that uh, the forecasting will be prepared through leveling of time. Uh, so we have to understand the, the meaning of what we call a strategic plan. A uh, strategic plan means it's uh, setting uh, the overall goals and objectives of the organization, yes, but as or within a very long range planning level, which means could be extended from five to 10 years as of a period. And then when we head to the long range plan, we see that this is mainly will be reflected into getting the uh, uh, capital items or as we call fixed costs or long term investments. Uh, mentioned or uh, illustrated in our own balance sheet. Uh, when we speak about continuous budget or the other name, which is rolling budget, this refers to add a one month or maybe a one quarter uh, in the future as the 
current month just ended uh, and dropped from the uh, budget uh, schedule. Uh, when we speak about the master budget, we must understand that operating budget uh, refers usually to the income statement and financial budget usually refer to uh, capital budget, cash budget, and ending balance sheet. Uh, this is the usual uh, relationship. When we prepare budget, we must understand that uh, the most uh, important point to deal with is the sales budget, because this is a starting point. And then we are going to speak about the cash collection, and then we are going to speak about uh, the purchase <clears throat> and cost of goods sold, and then the cash disbursement related to it, and then we are going to reflect the operating expenses budget, selling and administrative, and then uh, the cash disbursement for operating expenses. Uh, of course, when we speak about uh, budgets, we are to start with the sales budget. So as we are provided with this information related to this example, uh, uh, we are given months, May, June, July, August, September, and we are giving expected sales here. And then we are given that credit sales are going to be 80%. So this means cash sales is going to be 20%. And this credit is going to be collected uh, over uh, three months. One of them is the one uh, that's related to the sale, uh, sales um, process itself, uh, 80% and 15% in the month following, and then 5% uh, will be expected to be uncollectible, so it's not going to be uh, mentioned in our case here. In the budget, we will find that the first schedule we prepare related to a uh, sales budget, and the sales budget is going to be by reflecting the total sales given into two main rows. The first row is going to be the cash sales and the second one is going to be the credit sales. So the cash sales here, if we are going to uh, see, it's about it's be about to 20% and the credit sales is going to be the 80%. So if we add in the third row, it will be the total sales of that month. So when we add the 20 to the 80, you will find that the total is $100,000, which is going to be the total sales of the month of June, and so on for the rest of the months. So it's about showing the reader or the user or the uh, manager that we have uh, dividing our own uh, uh, sales of the month into two categories. One of them is going to be as of cash sales, which is the 20% and the 80% goes for credit sales without uh, providing any uh, branching for the uh, credit sales as of uh, when to collect or how to collect or the amounts collected. This is not the issue. And then when we are to prepare the second budget, which is about cash collection. So when we are to prepare the cash collection, we are to set that when we collect, we will collect the cash directly in the months of sale and we are going to collect 80% out of the credit sales in the very same month and then we are going to collect 15% out of the credit sales that's done in the previous month. So here, when we look to June, we are going to collect to 20%, 20,000 sorry cash directly, which is the 20% out of sales. And then here, what is this 64? 64 is about 80% out of the 80,000. That's uh, resembling the um, uh, the credit sales of the month. And then when we are looking for this we will see that 15 percent must be collected in the next month so the 80 thousands we are going to collect out of it this 12 which means the 15 percent in the month of july so where lies the five percent it's not mentioned it's neglected here it's not our business into preparing the uh, cash collection budget so when we look here to the month of July, we are to collect the eighteen thousand four four hundred the eighteen thousand four hundred dollars as of the cash uh, part of sales, and for this part, which is seventy three six hundred, 
If we multiply that uh, by 80%, we will find this amount, which is 58 and uh, 880 uh, as to be collected in the very same months, which is 80% out of credit sales. And then when we are moving to the next month, we will multiply this amount as of credit by 15% to find out this is a result to be collected, which is 11 thousand and forty dollars and when we are to add each column three main categories the cash sales and the 80 percent out of the uh, credit sales related to the same months and the 15 percent out of the credit sales uh, related to the past months we are going to find that we are to get the total amount to be collected in the uh, required month um, that is related to the very first type of budget, which is a sales budget and cash collection budget. To the second level in preparing a budget which is related to disbursements and uh, expenses. Uh, this is related to purchase uh, budget and the cash disbursements budget. Uh, when we this, we will find that there is an important equation to apply. Uh, the budget of purchases is going to be as of uh, we will start with um, uh, desired ending inventory plus cost of goods sold and then uh, deduct the beginning inventory. This will lead to uh, the budgeted purchase, of course. Uh, cost of goods sold <coughs> uh, will be um, given as of a percentage of whatever item or you are going to be given the uh, number related to it. Uh, so if you have this um, example to see it, the uh, carry company has the following information. The month is given to you as March, April, May, June, July, and the budgeted sales is going to be $150,000, 153, 151, and 254,500. And the last month of July is at $252,500. And in addition, the gross profit rate is 40%. <clears throat> and the desired ending inventory level is 20 percent of next month sales take care about this part it's 40 percent this is the gross profit and the ending inventory level is provided to be 20 percent of the uh, next month sales so here as we given up we are provided with the sales so the 40 percent will lead to the cost of goods sold and the inventory level is going to be calculated as of this next month so when we reduce the 40 percent of here we will get the cox so let's supply what months are required take care sir we are applying from april to june not all of these we are only for these three months only that quarter so so when we are uh, to solve this uh, case we will find that any desired ending inventory is going to be 20 percent uh, of next month sales so when we are to multiply 20 percent to any uh, next month sales we will find the uh, desired ending inventory uh, sequentially and then uh, cogs what will be cogs as provided in the last slide a 40 percent reflecting uh, the profit required uh, as of uh, a margin so when we are to calculate the cost it will be the other part to complete the 100 percent which means 60 percent so when we apply this 60 percent to uh, the sales uh, of the very same months we will find ourselves calculating the cost of goods sold. Uh, then when we add the end desired ending inventory plus the cost of goods sold, we will find the, that the total will reflect our needs. Uh, when we deduct the beginning inventory, and as you know that always the ending inventory is going to be the beginning inventory of the next coming month or period as uh, whatever uh, level of speaking uh, of course uh, when we are to prepare the colon of the total the 
ending inventory will be the inventory given in the last month only so be very careful with that part and when we are looking at the beginning inventory so the beginning inventory will be reflected as the beginning of the first month provided into your case uh, this is very important to so be very cautious about this and uh, after applying the equation we will get to the total purchase required uh, to be applied um, of course uh, if, uh, if there will be any disbursements uh, this will be according to the given information like the collection what will be required in the same month okay what will be required in the next month it's okay um, and then we will head to the financial uh, budget to understand a financial budget is a capital budget or a cash budget or a sheet when we head to the cash budget we will find that the available cash balance uh, equals the beginning cash balance plus the minimum cash balance desired and of course uh, we are to find that we have cash receipts or cash collections this will come from uh, collecting uh, accounts receivable uh, from cash sales and other operating income sources and when we are looking to cash disbursements this is going to be uh, as of um, uh, any bill paying, uh, any payroll, uh, wages, salaries, and commissions, and whatever expenses to be paid in cash. And take care, uh, depreciation is not an item to be paid uh, or any um, accrual given item. It's not accepted to be included within the cash budget. Uh, when we prepare uh, the cash budget we will find that the ending cash balance equals the beginning cash balance plus whatever uh, receipts from cash minus whatever disbursements from cash and then uh, if uh, the given answer is going to be a deficit we have to get some financing to cover it and if it is uh, about uh, that we have additional or excess amount we could go for investing this amount uh, for uh, a case related to that uh, part uh, april 30 is ending cash balance available to us is forty five thousand dollars and dividends paid uh, twelve thousand and the cash expenditure uh, in may for operating is thirty six eight hundred and take care from the word expenditure means paid and depreciation this item takes uh, take care about it please because depreciation is not an item of payment and we have a cash collections this means collected merchandise purchase paid in cash okay as paid in cash and purchase equipment for cash okay if any item without the word cash do not include it within your solution Carson company desires to keep a minimum this is very important the minimum cash balance is a ten thousand so we have to be very cautious about this for our solution we will start with the beginning cash balance as provided from your case 45 and then we are to go for the cash collections which is uh, given uh, 89 so the total cash available is going to be 134 thousand dollars and then we will head to the disbursements uh, a merchandise purchase for 56200 and the operating expenses 36800 and the equipment purchase was 17500 and the payment of dividends was 12000 be very careful depreciation is not included again and then at the end uh, if we are going to speak we will find that the ending cash balance when we do uh, the uh, deduction uh, out of the disbursements our cash disbursements 122,500 from the 134 as of thousands uh, as of total cash available we'll find then the ending cash balance is uh, 11,500 uh, dollars uh, take care that the minimum cash requirement is going to be a 10,000 so this means we have exceeding amount of a 1,000 and uh, a 500 uh, dollars which means uh, this amount could be invested or whatever or kept according to the management decision 